Amen. So happy Father's Day. Amen. To our fathers. Uh, I'm going to be in uh, the book of Genesis this morning. Genesis chapter number six. <clears throat> Give you time to find a place. And uh, don't forget now, next week is homecoming. And I hope we have uh, good attendance and always enjoy homecoming. It's always good, you know. Uh, have some chicken and the things that go along with it, but the fellowship's good. So come and be with us, please. Uh, and, uh, you know, bring whatever it is uh, that, that you would like to bring. And uh, I'm sure it will all be good. We always have uh, good things at, at, at homecoming. Never seen us uh, run out of food yet. Amen. Never have. Uh, I have seen it close. Thought thought was going to run out. I remember uh, one year when I was pastoring at Lakeview, and we had homecoming, and uh, you know the Solid Rock was invited, and and uh, some folks from Solid Rock came. Brother Grover came, and and we had the table set down uh, downstairs, and. Uh, we, uh, uh, I was looking at. It, I said, Brother Grover. I said, uh, I don't know, buddy. It's looking uh, like we may not have enough food. Uh, and but anyway, we had uh, prayer and we prayed over the food. Uh, and lo and behold, we we had enough food and food left over. Uh, and uh, the Lord just did that. Uh, you know, I mean, we we brought what we could and what what we had. Uh, but God blessed it, and I am confident He multiplied it. He did. Amen. Uh, so uh, let's uh, let's come next week, hopefully, and uh, God will bless you. All right, uh, Genesis chapter number six, and uh, I want to read a couple of verses uh, this morning. Uh, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. And there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, and the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, uh, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Uh, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. Uh, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you, God, for another Father's Day. Uh, thank you, Lord, that we're able through your Son to call upon you, uh, our Father in heaven. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that you'd have us uh, this day that we might do the things that would bring honor and praise and glory unto thee. Thank you for Jesus Christ that came and gave his life uh, on the cross and rose again and is seated at the right hand. I pray, Lord, that you might help us today to say only those things that would bring glory unto you. I have your way in our lives now in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, you can read the rest of this chapter, and I, uh, you know, debated whether I'd read uh, the leading verses, but I wanted you to see, uh, uh, you know, what was going on in the world uh, at this time, and then all of a sudden, uh, Noah appears. Amen. Uh, God always has a man. The Bible said that uh, he sought for a man to stand in the gap and make up uh, the hedge. But Noah, I, I want to preach on him in a different aspect, not uh, just, you know, the things that he did in the building of the ark and all that, uh, but Noah as a father. I didn't read this verse, but if you read on, the Bible said Noah had sons, uh, Shem and Ham uh, and Japheth. And, and of course, you can trace those back uh, and find out where uh, the peoples of the world came from. Uh, but listen, if we had a list today 
of uh, fathers, uh, of great dads out of the Bible. Uh, probably, uh, you know, we might say Abraham. Uh, certainly, he was a great man. He's recognized uh, all over the world. Uh, probably, uh, there's not many places in the world you could go uh, and mention the, the uh, name of Abraham that, that people wouldn't recognize who you're talking about. Uh, Abraham, a great man. Isaac uh, was a great man, a great father. Jacob was a great man. Uh, and then we might mention uh, Solomon. Uh, Solomon was a great dad. Uh, uh, he, he wrote uh, a, a lot of the Proverbs for his sons. Uh, if you read, he, he talked about his son and giving him wisdom, imparting wisdom to him. Uh, you might talk about uh, uh, Joseph, uh, you know, because he, uh, even though he was not Jesus' uh, uh, dad, it was, or wasn't his father, he served uh, as a father figure. Uh, and uh, he raised him in his home, and he provided the things that were necessary in the home. Uh, and so Joseph was a, a great dad, uh, and so on. Uh, but many people, you know, when we think about Noah, we think about the ark, we think about uh, the flood, we think about the animals coming uh, into the ark and all of that. Uh, and then some folks remember other things about Noah. They'll uh, uh, talk about, uh, for instance, if you read on about him, you'll find that when they got off the earth, uh, uh, off the ark, the Bible said Noah planted a vineyard, and then it said he got drunk uh, uh, and, and all of that, and people will talk about that. Uh, or they'll talk about his interaction with Canaan and, and Ham uh, uh, and all of that. But listen, uh, I want you to concentrate on a couple of things that, uh, that stand out about Noah uh, that Noah has in common uh, with a modern man or modern dad. Uh, uh, verse 5. God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Noah raised a family during a time of extreme wickedness. And then secondly, uh, he raised a family during a, a, a time of extreme violence. Down in verse 11, uh, the Bible said the earth was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. Now, now does these two things remind you uh, of anything? The world we're living in. It is corrupt and it is filled with violence. Uh, I mean, folks even going to church today uh, have to go with, uh, you know, one eye uh, kind of watching out because you never know what's going to happen. Uh, I never thought I would live to see the day uh, when someone would attack people who were worshiping in the house of the Lord. But we are seeing that. And I'll be honest, I don't really expect it to get any better. I don't. I, I think uh, we are living in the last days, and I think the time is drawing nigh. I don't know when the day is. God had not shared that with me, and he's not going to. Uh, but he did give us a number of things we could look at. Uh, but Noah lived in a time of extreme wickedness and raised his family. He lived in a time of extreme violence. Uh, he raised his family at a time, according to verse 12, uh, uh, when God was being ignored. Nobody uh, uh, was uh, uh, thinking about the Lord. Nobody was uh, talking to God except Noah. Uh, and then if you go on down in verse 17 uh, 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 and look at what it says, uh, uh, and behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, uh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. This was a judgment hand of God. So Noah was living in a time and raised a family when the pending judgment of God was nigh. Amen. Now listen, I believe this ought to ring a bell with you, that we are living in wicked times. We are living in corrupt times. We are living in times when God is being ignored. I saw an article yesterday about uh, some of our service uh, personnel, our military personnel, and they were marching, uh, you know, as they do sometimes for uh, various reasons. They were marching, uh, but they were marching behind uh, uh, not the American flag, but they were marching behind a gay pride flag. And there was nowhere in that column of men that was marching, uh, there was nowhere an American flag to be seen. Now listen, the world has changed. 
and not for the better. Amen. I want to give you a few thoughts this morning on the secret to being a successful father. You know, uh, I heard somebody say not long ago uh, that they weren't sure they wanted to have children because of the world that we're living in and how dire the circumstances are. Well, listen, I, I would say uh, to have children in the world that we are living in, you certainly need God. And if you don't have God, then you're going to have problems. You're going to have problems. But listen, what was Noah's secret? I believe he was successful because out of Noah and his sons came all the population of the world. If you're sitting here today under the sound of my voice, your lineage can be traced back to Noah. All of us. And then beyond that, all the way back to Adam. We all came from the same seed. We were all made from the same dirt. Amen. God breathed into man the breath of life. Man became a living soul. Doesn't make no difference uh, what we look like uh, or what our educational background is or the lack thereof or what our skin color is or any of that. We all came from the same place. Amen. Amen. And it amazes me that we have uh, the issues that we have today knowing these things that, that God uh, is, uh, is the one who made us all. Amen. Verse number 8. The Bible said, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. And here it is, Noah walked with God. Amen. Noah walked with God. Uh, he, uh, the Bible said, this was a, uh, uh, one of his secrets. He walked with God. I, I mean, every day he lived for God. Doesn't mean he didn't have ups and downs. Can you imagine living in a world like this? Wickedness, violence, nobody respected God. I am sure he was criticized every day. I am sure that he had people that came out from villages uh, where he lived because Noah didn't build his ark down by the coast, you know. And probably that was a source of ridicule because Noah went out uh, in the middle of the wilderness. He, he wasn't down by the Red Sea or he wasn't down by the Mediterranean. Uh, he wasn't uh, uh, even at the Sea of Galilee. He was out in the middle of nowhere building what? A vessel that's supposed to float on the water. I can hear him now. Noah, you building uh, a boat there, Noah? Yes, sir. Who told you to build that? Well, God told me to build that. Well, Noah, it looked like if that God you serve uh, had known what he was doing, he would have told you to move a little closer to the water uh, because you can't float a boat on sand, Noah. And Noah said, I'm waiting on God to send me the water. Thank you very much. Amen. God's going to send me the water. Now, this went on for not, uh, you know, five years or ten years, not uh, a decade or a couple of decades. This went on for 120 years. Who did Noah have to help him build the ark? Well, he had Shem and Ham and Japheth. You know, maybe, I don't know, he may have uh, gotten workers to come and help him. I don't know. Uh, but considering it took him 120 years, I, I dare say he probably didn't have anybody but Shem and Ham and Japheth. You know, they were building this ark. Uh, but there's two words I want you to notice here that really give us a clue as who Noah was and where he stood for the Lord. I, I want you to look at them. The Bible uh, talks about in verse 8, Noah found grace. Grace in the eyes of the Lord is the first word. Amen. Grace. What is grace? Well, grace is God's unmerited love or favor. Amen. We don't deserve God's blessing. I was thinking about this yesterday. You, you ever just stop and think sometimes how good God is? And I was thinking about that, and I was going back through my life and, and looking at things, you know, in my life that I could remember. And I, I said, Lord, I don't know how you could save me. I really don't. Uh, because, uh, you know, I can see things in my life uh, where I went sideways from the Lord and I've done things that God wouldn't approve of and, and transgressed his laws. And, and if I had what I deserve, Brother Wesley, I would be in the pits of hell this morning. Amen. 
The Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, and that's the thing that God is trying to show us is that we are sinners and that we need uh, uh, God to help us. And we cannot help ourselves. We can't uh, build our way into heaven like Nimrod. We can't, uh, uh, we can't work our way into heaven. We can't do enough, work enough, say enough uh, uh, to appease God for the things that we've done. Only Jesus Christ could do that. Noah had grace. Grace shows us what? It shows us, one, that we are sinners. Amen. It, uh, it, uh, uh, it provides us with the faith to turn to God in salvation. And then, uh, secondly, the second word, uh, uh, the, the Bible said in verse 9, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man. Amen. And when you read that word, just uh, in the Bible, or justified. Think of this. It's uh, easy to remember. It's a good mnemonic. Uh, just as though he had never sinned. Amen. That's where we have to be. In order to enter heaven, Revelation will tell you that there are no liars, there are no thieves, there are no whoremongers, there are no sorcerers, uh, you know, uh, uh, in heaven. Uh, that, that's, uh, and if you, uh, if you study out the word in the sorcerer in the Greek, I've told you before, uh, the root word uh, that it comes from is pharmakia. You recognize that? Uh, CVS is a pharmacy, pharmakia. That's where we get our word pharmacy. In other words, sorcerers uh, weren't just people who practiced magic or, or dealt in the black arts or in the occult, uh, uh, but they were drug users. And God said, those folks won't be in heaven. Uh, there won't be any liars in heaven. There won't be any whoremongers in heaven. There won't be any cheaters in heaven. There won't be any. Uh, uh, and uh, Paul, but Paul said, uh, uh, and sometimes uh, we were all of these things, you know. There's not a one of us here this morning that hasn't done something. I, I'm not saying you've done any of those things uh, I, because I don't know you. Uh, but uh, I'm saying that there's something in your life that you no doubt have crossed God's line and God would be displeased with that would forbid your entrance into the city of heaven. Uh, but listen, uh, thanks be to God, Jesus Christ uh, came and he was perfect and he died for me, he died for you, and if we will accept him, he will make us just. That is a miracle indeed. Otherwise, we could not get into heaven. Noah walked with God. Amen. Just refers to our standing before God. It means to be right with God, to be right in his sight. Uh, now, this is a result of responding to the grace of God and exercising faith in God and his provision for salvation. Simply put, it's the message of the gospel. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 said, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should Boast, amen. Uh, listen, uh, and how do we do this? Well, uh, uh, we go to God uh, and we confess our sins and, and uh, we turn to him in faith and we put our trust in him, amen. Uh, and we, uh, we put our trust in him to save us uh, and we hang our trust on nothing else, not on ourselves, not on mankind, not on anything but the Lord Jesus Christ. And God justifies us, makes us like Noah, just as though we had never sinned. Noah was a converted man. He was a consecrated man. Uh, the Bible said Noah was perfect. Now, hold your horses here. You know, when uh, folks look at Christians today, you know, uh, uh, they're looking a lot of times for perfection. And, and they will judge your life. That's why we need to be on our guard, folks, because people are watching. People are watching. Uh, and, and I pray the Lord goes with me every day and helps me to maintain uh, uh, an attitude like Christ would have uh, so that I don't do anything that would bring shame uh, and disgrace on the name of the Lord. Uh, but we're in the flesh, and sometimes we still do things that people watch, and they say, well, I thought you were a Christian, you know, but yet you said that, or you laughed at that, or, or you know, you did this or you did that. Uh, listen, uh, perfect, what does it mean? Uh, well, uh, in Christ, we are perfect. That's the only way. Uh, but we're still in a body of flesh. Amen. The word means upright. Amen. It carries the idea that Noah, one, claimed a relationship with God. 
And not only that, but he lived out that relationship. Every day he went about uh, by walking with God and seeking to tell people about the Lord. Uh, uh, every peg he drove, uh, every uh, uh, piece of wood that he planed down, uh, everything that he did uh, working on that ark was telling folk, look, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready because a flood is coming. Now the world today doesn't want to hear what Christians have to say. Uh, and you'll hear mocking quite a bit, you know. Uh, you see it now, uh, uh, you know, on TV. I, I, I was flipping channels the other night, or actually uh, the news, I had watched the latter part of the news, uh, and uh, uh, the news went off, and it rolled into another program. One of these, uh, I don't know what you call these people. They think they're funny, but they're not really funny. Uh, and, and they opened their program uh, uh, with uh, you know a cartoon skit that somebody had uh, had written up, uh, and they were uh, literally uh, blaspheming uh, the name of Jesus Christ and showing you know depictions of Jesus Christ and different things and stuff. And it took me all of about you know however long it took me to reach for the remote and turn that off because I am not going to watch that. I am not going to watch that. And of course, I'm sure they all thought it was funny. Now, the man that, uh, uh, that uh, runs the show, I think his name is uh, Colbert or Colbert or I don't know, whatever his name, he thinks he's funny. Uh, he claims to be a Christian. But listen, a man who knows God would never, ever allow such a thing. Never. Uh, and, and so, listen, Noah was a consecrated man, meaning he was upright. The Bible said he walked with God. Uh, and uh, uh, listen, he wasn't cold and then hot uh, and up and down and in and out. Have you ever met folks like that? Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, they're today they're on fire for the Lord. Uh, and two weeks from now, uh, you know, they don't uh, know much about God. Or, or they're in church for six months and then they quit and they get out uh, and they stay out for years. Listen, Noah wasn't that way. Noah was a man that walked with God. Now, I'm sure there are days when Noah felt better about things. He probably got up some mornings and said, all right, boys, the sun is up, the birds are singing, and God has given us this plan, and we need to get on it. Now you all come and get, uh, get to work. And he probably uh, whistled uh, Amazing Grace or whatever while, uh, while he was building the ark. He thought, this is great. You know, and then there were probably days uh, after folks had come out from the town and thrown their rotten produce at him and, and uh, made fun of him and did all that thing uh, uh, that he probably didn't have such a good day. Uh, uh, but listen, we don't walk by feelings. We walk by faith. Amen. Amen. We walk by faith. Faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Noah... His second secret was he witnessed to others. Amen. Uh, 2 Peter 2.5 said Noah was busy preparing an ark. And as he was doing that, he was witnessing. Amen. Did you know what you're doing and living your life? You're witnessing to the folks you work with, uh, to the folks you meet in the, you know, in the store or whatever. It might be, you know, uh, I, let me give you an example. We were out at uh, Cindy's mom's house, you know, we're trying to get it ready since her parents are both gone now. We're going to sell the house. And so we're going through trying to clean things up. And I had a dumpster out there and we were throwing stuff away. And, and uh, Cindy was like, you know, be, be careful. And I was like, I'm ready to throw stuff away. Let's, you know, let's throw it away. And she's like, well, just calm down. Just, you know, don't be throwing everything away. Uh, and, and so uh, I was like, let's get her done, get her on out here, you know. Uh, but we got, we, we found the, you know, medium there, and uh, uh, there was a, a mirror, uh, uh, Brother Wesley, that had been on the, the backside of the bathroom door, <clears throat> and I had to replace that door. 
But I didn't put that mirror back up because it was old. And you know how mirrors do on the bottom edges sometimes, uh, you know, the, the backing will wear off and I thought that thing needs to go. I had it standing up in the uh, in the kitchen beside the refrigerator. Uh, and uh, I said, I'm gonna, uh, there's nothing, nobody's gonna want that mirror, I'm gonna throw it away. Uh, and so she and uh, a neighbor were out there and I came out the door of that mirror and I was headed for the dumpster and they were both like, don't break that mirror. <laughs> I said, why not? They said, seven years of bad luck. I said, nonsense. Nonsense. There's no such thing as luck. Amen. No such thing as luck. I, I know. I've heard that all my life. Seven years of bad luck if you break a mirror. Well, I must have broke a bunch of them in my life. Uh, <laughs> i tell you what. <laughs> you say, what did you do with it? I took it to the dumpster and I threw it up in there. Now, as, as it would happen, it didn't break because it landed on some stuff that I'd already put in there. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, didn't, I didn't care. I mean, I threw it. I just like, phew, if it broke, it broke. I didn't care. But it landed on some cardboard boxes that were there and didn't break. Uh, and then later on, uh, you know, throwing stuff over the side, boom, it got broken. You know, I don't know. I may have broke it. Somebody may have broke it. But... Uh, uh, <laughs> It matters not. So if I die uh, for a week from now, blame it on that mirror. I don't know. <laughs> no, God is in control. But but my point is, they said, don't oh, don't break that mirror. I said, you know what? Uh, I, I I'm not depending on mirrors. I'm depending on God. Amen. Amen. I'm dependent on God. Noah witnessed to others through his conduct. Uh, amen. Every uh, uh, he, every contact with society that he had, uh, every uh, peg that he drove, as I said, e every uh, little bit of care that he took in the building of the ark, and I think he took great care in the building of the ark, the life that he was living uh, uh, was giving a witness to the folks around him. And, and then uh, uh, in his conversation or in his behavior, Noah lived right and he worked right for the Lord. Uh, amen. And, and if we are to live the right kind of life and do what is right uh, for the Lord, amen. Now, hear this. As I said, Noah worked for 120 years on a dark. God told him, Noah, I'm going to destroy the world by water. You work, you build an ark, and you invite these, uh, these animals uh, to come in. Some people think Noah, you know, sent out expeditions and went and gathered animals. No, he didn't have to. God sent those animals. They came to him. He didn't have time to be hunting animals. They came to him. You know, giraffes and elephants and, you know, all that stuff. You say, what about the whales? Well, they didn't have to go in the ark because they're in the water already, you know. But all these other creatures, think about that ark. And, and uh, you know, all, he worked 120 years, and then the day came, and guess what? The only people who got in the ark were Mrs. Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth and their wives. Does that ring a bell today? You know, the, the, the best thing we can do, dads, the best thing we can do is to ensure that our families know the Lord. Amen? Now, I, I have biological family, and then, as you know, I've got extended family. I, I count the church as my family. I, I've got folks that, you know, I, I count like uh, sons and daughters to me, even though they're not related to me, but I count them as such uh, because uh, they're like family. Well, guess what? I don't want any of my family to die without God. I, I want to meet everyone on the streets of glory someday, Brother Andrew. I do. I, I want to walk up to them and say, boy, I'm glad to see you here. Uh, isn't it great to be in God's heaven? Because I know what it means uh, if folks miss that. There's no other hope. There's no other hope. Listen, our family should be important to us. And, and a real dad, his family is important to them. I, I read this past week about a couple who had uh, were on a lake. They took their children, I think they were, I don't know, 8 and 10 and 13, somewhere along in there. Uh, may have gotten those wrong, but anyway, their, their children were uh, along those ages. They took them out to an island in the middle of the lake, and I don't know, I guess they were having recreation there, told their children, we're going to get water. We'll be back. They got in the boat, left. Guess what? They never came back. Left their children stranded on the island in the middle of the lake. And 
of course, the police started looking for him. Guess what? Uh, uh, the man had uh, warrants out on him for distribution of methamphetamine and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, the children are probably off better without mom and dad, but I'm glad uh, somebody was passing by, heard these children. They'd been there for hours, and, and now they start waving the boats going by, uh, and somebody picked them up. Thank God for that. Somebody picked them up. Uh, you know, uh, uh, and then uh, I heard uh, also not uh, uh, just this past week, uh, someone had taken uh, their little daughter who was like three years old had taken them out somewhere on a, a public road and put them out of the car and set them down on the public road and took off and left the child there. I, I just can't imagine anybody who so depraved they would do such a thing and a stranger found found the child. We're living in a sad day, folks. Listen, but the Bible said, Galatians 6, 9, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen? We need to keep doing the right thing. You say it's wicked times. Keep doing the right things. It's corrupt times, preacher. Keep doing the right thing. It's evil times, preacher. Keep doing the right thing. Amen? We need to keep on living for the Lord, keep doing like Noah was doing, and keep witnessing uh, through our life, through our words, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and actions are a whole lot more powerful than, than words, you know, they are. Uh, I've told you, some of you this before, but I'll tell you again, years ago I worked in a place uh, uh, where they made uh, metal buildings. They made everything from the steel girders to the outside metal, and, and they had all the brake presses and all the shears and all the roll form machines and welders and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I did various uh, uh, things there. But uh, there, there was a, an older gentleman, uh, at least I thought he was older. I was, uh, you know, I was like 22 or I was young. Uh, he was probably my age now. Uh, I thought he was old. He, <laughs> he was ancient you now. Uh, uh, James was his name, uh, and uh, you know he was approaching uh, the late part of his life uh, in the shadows, you know. And uh, you know I made no secret that I was a Christian. I, I wasn't uh, in people's face about it, you know. I wasn't uh, browbeating people all the time, but I did witness to them, and I would tell them about the Lord, and I'd use opportunities uh, uh, to try to witness to folks. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I tried to live for the Lord. Uh, and, you know, one day James came to me. He said, hey, can I talk to you? I said, sure. He said, well, this fellow, and he called the name of the guy. Uh, and he said, he's been talking to me uh, about the Lord. And he said, but some of the things he said, I just don't know. He, he said, it confuses me. And, uh, and I said, well, I said, James, the reason it confuses you is because this fellow that you're talking about is actually a member of a cult. And I said, that cult has some really strange beliefs. And I said, the, the gospel that he's given you is not the gospel in the Bible. It's been changed. It's been twisted. And I said, what he's given you won't get you to heaven. And well, that's about all he could take for that day. Next day, he came to me again, and he said, "You tell me more about this." And I, I said, "James, uh, let me tell you." After work, I said, "James, let me tell you about the Lord." And he said, "Okay." So I think I had a pocket testament, and we sat down outside on some steel, and I said, "James, let me show you." And, and I showed him that all men are sinners. All sin and come short of the glory of God. And that Christ died to save sinners and he died to save us all. And that his sacrifice is sufficient. And, and I showed him Romans 10 and 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And I went through all of that and I could see by the expression on his face that, that it hit home. I could tell. I said, James, don't you want to be saved? Don't you want peace in your heart and know where you're going when you die? He said, I do. I do. I, I want to be saved. I said, well, let's do it. He said, well, uh, one thing. I, and I said, what's that, James? He said, he said, my wife is just like me. She don't know these things. And he said, 
you know, I love my wife and she loves me and told me how many years they've been together. He said, what I would like to do, he said, I would like, he said, I've got a Bible at home. And, and he said, these scriptures that you, you, you give me, he said, I, I know what scriptures you give me. He said, I would like to take the Bible when I get home and sit down with my wife. And he said, I want to read them to her. He said, because I want both of us to be saved together. And I said, okay. Uh, I said, really, you know, I wish you'd go ahead and commit your life to the Lord and then go tell your wife. But, you know, he said, no, I, I really, he said, I love my wife. And he said, I think it'd be great if both of us could accept the Lord together. And he said, you know, he thanked me. <clears throat> and I said, okay, James, I, uh, that's great. Uh, I said, James, don't you forget. He said, oh, I'm not. I'm not. This was Friday afternoon. Monday morning, I came in, punched in, the, the bell went off, and um, I was looking around, you know, taking a head count, who's there, who's not there, and are we going to get done, what's done today? Uh, the supervisor came out, <clears throat> he said, before we get started this morning, I want everybody up here, uh, we all gathered around, he said, I just want to tell y'all fellas uh, that uh, Friday afternoon, after work, James went home. And sometime after he got home, uh, he went outside, was perusing his garden that he had planted, his tomatoes and all that, and he collapsed and died on the spot. Now, you cannot imagine how that made me feel. <clears throat> because I had shared with him the gospel. He promised me he's going to tell his wife. Now, the question is, did he do that before? Or was he waiting? I hope I meet James in heaven. I know he heard the gospel. I know he wanted to be saved. I know it. I know it. I hope he told his wife and, and you know, that they both got saved. But I don't know. I don't know. Noah was committed. And then let me quit with this so we can have communion. Noah, if, if you look in chapter 7, <clears throat> I didn't read it, but chapter 7. In verse number one, the Lord said to Noah, Come down all thy house into the ark for thee. Have I seen righteous before me in this generation? Amen. He, Noah, won his family by winning their respect. You know, when, when dad says, you know, go to church. Well, dad, are you coming? No, I'm not coming. When, when dad sends his children, doesn't take them, he's not winning their respect. Or, or when dad uh, does go to church and he claims to be saved and he lives for God on Sunday, but on Monday, uh, you know, uh, he's doing the things of the world. He's not winning his children's respect. And so we need to respect the Lord. When it was time to enter the ark, the family followed. Why? Because they believed Noah. They believed what he had to say. They had respect for him. And... He won their response. They followed him in the ark. And then what happened? The rains fell. God shut the door, the Bible said, and the rain fell. And then they had to hear some stuff that they didn't want to hear, I'm sure. All those people who'd been coming out from the villages and ridiculing Noah and ridiculing his God and ridiculing what God had told him and, and all of that. I, I'm sure when the when the rain fell, they'd never seen rain fall. The water came up out of the ground and mist covered the earth. Uh, they'd never seen rain. They'd never seen lightning. They'd never heard thunder. I'm sure this terrified people. You know, I've seen it before. And there have been times in storms that it was really terrifying. My wife and I went to South Carolina years ago. And it was really, really hot like it's been these past few days, this place that we were staying. I mean, it was really hot. The humidity was high. And you know there's going to be a storm that evening. We were staying by uh, the James River in this uh, place, alligators down there, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and that evening when the sun went down, uh, here come the storm. Brother, I have never been in such a storm in my life. That thing was like hanging right over us, Brother Andrew, and the lightning was literally hitting trees a few feet away and cracking trees. And I mean, uh, uh, it was it was 
terrible. I, I'm sure the people in Noah's day were, were terrified. And now the water is uh, staying on the ground. The, uh, the ground can't take it all. The Bible said not only did it fall from heaven, but the fountains of the deep broke up. You realize there's more water in the surface of the earth than there is on the surface of the earth? All of that broke loose. It started flooding water coming up out of the ground. Now it's not only ankle deep, it's knee deep. You know what? We better go see Noah. But too late. The door shut. God shut the door, and they began to bang on the door. Uh, Noah, let us in. We believe you now. Uh, we believe you now, but, but it's too late. So they had to hear all that. Listen, uh, don't wait until it's too late. Dads, we need to be like Noah. Walk with God. Amen. Be consistent. Be consistent with the Lord. Amen. hope you got something out of the message this morning. We're going to have communion, and then I'll let you go. Uh, and uh, maybe, you, uh, uh, maybe you've got a dad that you want to go see. Uh, and if you do, that's great. Uh, and you go see that uh, dad or that loved one and tell them that you love them and, and uh, you know, enjoy your enjoy your day so that's, that's